All right, well, the purpose of this uh, uh, seminar is to take a look at uh, all of the business aspects as we look at, uh, you know, what do we cover in an MBA program? And, and Johnson's got an MBA program that we work with our students on. Uh, and, and these are professional adults, uh, working adults that, uh, that we work with. And we look at all of the different sections like accounting and marketing and uh, leadership and economics and, and all of these things, but we bring it together uh, and uh, develop a business plan as the capstone uh, project. And so uh, one of the challenges that businesses have today is just a high failure rate. And so whether it is uh, a brand new entrepreneurship uh, business, whether it's a uh, business as mission uh, type of organization, the failure rate, depending on how you define it, runs 50 to 70 percent uh, usually. And so one of the main reasons for this is the fact that people just don't plan enough and put together uh, cash flow projections and all of these things that uh, that need to happen. And so uh, this is what we do in a business plan. So what I want to do in the next uh, few minutes is uh, go through and, and look at, okay, what's part of the business plan and what are the kinds of things that we need to account for uh, to make sure we're successful. So since this is a, a homecoming event, I figured it'd be appropriate to introduce myself and uh, start with a, a little background um, there we go. Okay, so we got a, a picture. So this is uh, th this is the family tree here. So uh, my grandfather came to campus in 1932 as a freshman, and uh, was uh, part of the board of trustees for 20 or 30 years. Uh, and uh, my grandmother, my mom's mom, was actually the dean of students, a uh, dean of women uh, on campus, and the campus nurse. And so she lived up in Myrtle Hall in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, my mom lived in Myrtle Hall uh, in middle school and high school. And so when dad came to school as a student uh, in the 58, uh, he saw the pretty girl living up in Myrtle Hall. They ended up getting married and moved back to campus and worked on campus for 40 years or so. And mom's actually in her 50th year uh, working on campus. And uh, so, so I've got a good connection uh, with the campus going back a long way. Uh, but I was the prodigal son, and uh, as I mentioned, Mike, I went to Milligan uh, to study business, and because uh, Johnson didn't offer anything in business at the time, and uh, so I went to uh, to Milligan, and then uh, uh, started to work at Home Federal Bank uh, here in Knoxville. Uh, was my first job out of out of college, and then got an MBA from Tennessee uh, in finance. Uh, and then in my 30s, I went to work for Kimberly Clark Corporation. And a lot of people don't know Kimberly Clark's name, but it's Kleenex and Huggies and Kotex and Depend and Scott Paper and all these brands uh, that you see. And uh, so I worked for Kimberly Clark uh, in my 30s. And then in my 40s, I went to Genuine Parts Company, which is another company that nobody hardly recognizes. But Napa Auto Parts was is half of our business. And uh, I actually worked in the other half. But um, worked with a lot of uh, small businesses. And so this is one of the things that was actually the most interesting part of my job was looking at um, what are the needs of the small business. And I was almost like a consultant for our customers uh, because if our customers are successful, then we'll be successful. And so uh, I uh, uh, spent a lot of time uh, working with them and then got a, um, a PhD uh, in leadership with an idea that I wanted to teach and uh, so, uh, so that happened. And so then uh, here in my 50s, then I, uh, I came back home finally after being away from Johnson for uh, uh, a number of years and uh, starting the business program here. And uh, uh, I was asked, hey, we're starting a business uh, program. Are you interested? And I said, absolutely. And uh, so I was able to come back. So right now I spend about half my time working with MBA students online. Uh, so these are, like I said, working adults. Um, and I spend about half my time on campus with undergraduate students. So I teach uh, uh, finance, business analytics, and business communication uh, on campus. And uh, so that's a, just a quick background of, uh, of, of uh, where, where I come from. But as we're looking at this, we, I want to look at the business side of business as mission, marketplace ministry, social entrepreneurship. There's a lot of different words that our students are very interested in and a, a person that comes to Johnson to study business is not your typical business student that you would see at like UT or ETSU. You know, these, these are folks that have a mind toward how can I improve my neighborhood? How can I improve my community? And so uh, there's a real heart for this idea of business as a mission <laughs> among our students. 
Um, but then also what I'm going to talk about is also applicable to entrepreneurship, businesses, large to small. Uh, so uh, these are these are some general principles. Uh, but uh, like I said, our students tend to be really passionate about um, how can I use my business skills to uh, uh, improve uh, our community. So Milton Friedman's probably the, the greatest economist of the 20th century, and, and uh, one of his quotes here says, one of the great mistakes is to judge policies and programs by their intentions rather than the results. And a lot of times we're very passionate about making a difference uh, in the world. And so our intentions are really good, but then the results indicate a pretty high failure rate. And so uh, just because we have great intentions doesn't mean uh, that that should take the place of results. So we need to look at results, what's driving results and, and how can we uh, improve that? So like I said, the failure rate, depending on how you define failure and what time period you look at, uh, you'll see numbers out there that new businesses and new projects fail at a rate of 50, 70, or even 90% uh, of new startups. And so uh, what we wanna do is focus on how can we mitigate that so that the failure rate is not so high and, and we're much more likely uh, to be successful. So one of the primary ways to do that is, is to develop a business plan. Uh, so to put together, here are all of the things that are gonna make our, our business, our, our adventure here successful. And uh, uh, some of the ones that we've done, just to give you a few examples of, of what we've been working at here at Johnson, some of the business plans that our MBA students have, have produced. Um, one of them was a, a Christian organization in Romania, uh, owned some property on the Alps with a beautiful view, as you can see off the back there, a uh, great piece of property. An American family said, we'll donate a million dollars to build a retreat center there for the Christians in Romania, uh, but we wanna see a business plan first. You know, how are you gonna run this? How many employees do you need? What's the cash flow look like? How do you tap into ski resorts in the off season, for example, to help supplement the camps that are gonna go on there during the summers? And so there were a lot of questions. And so we had a couple of our students put together a business plan to say, okay, here's how this can be run. And that business plan was presented to the potential donors. And they said, yep, that's what we're looking for. Here's your check for a million dollars to, to build this facility. And so uh, it's uh, uh, under work, uh, underway here, as you can see, not quite done yet, but it's, uh, it's getting close. Uh, another one we did was uh, with an organization here in Knoxville called Centro Hispano. And uh, they work with the Hispanic community working to connect um, the, uh, uh, the Spanish community in Knoxville to the English speaking community. And uh, so one of our capstone presentations was about how they can use, and they, they asked us this question. They said, how can we utilize property? If we were to buy some property, uh, like an old strip center, a uh, retail space, something like that, what would it cost to convert it? What would it cost to buy it? What would it cost to convert it? What kind of rents uh, could we charge? Uh, you know, how do we market this in the Hispanic community to let people know that we're here, all of those things. And so we had a couple of students that, uh, again, worked on this. Here's where they're presenting to the board. And I've got here, uh, uh, Aaron uh, is over here on the, uh, the right. He's going to be presenting uh, a session tomorrow, uh, I believe, uh, that uh, uh, one of the ed talks. So uh, anyway, another, another good example of uh, here's uh, something we can do. Uh, and then the last example I'll show you is uh, a church camp. So we had uh, one of our students worked with a church camp and uh, they said, you know, we're, we're at risk of going under, things are not going well. And so uh, they asked for a business plan. How can we turn this around? And so one of our students uh, developed a business plan for the camp. And then at the board meeting, uh, they were so impressed, they ended up hiring him as their executive director. And uh, so he's now the executive director of the camp. And so, uh, anyway, so this is, uh, you know, important as we look at the uh, uh, business plans and uh, uh, how we can be successful uh, in the organization. So as we look at a business plan, there are 14 components. So, you know, preachers are taught, you know, three point sermon. I've got a 14 point presentation here. Now, the good news is I'm going to go through them pretty quick. Uh, but uh, what I want to do is just highlight briefly uh, the different components of what makes up this uh, uh, a good business plan. But the first thing before you get started is, is making sure you understand who's the audience. 
So who are we trying to reach uh, with this business plan? And so uh, it could be donors, uh, for example. So uh, uh, it, it could be investors if you're working on starting a new business. So understanding who the target audience is, uh, is, uh, is going to be important to, uh, uh, to understand to develop this. So the first section, uh, as we look at the, uh, uh, the business plan, the first section is the company description. Uh, so we want to tell our audience, who are we? Uh, what, are, what are we doing? And so we start out with a company name. So, so what's the name of our company? What's our mission? What are we trying to accomplish uh, here? Uh, legal perspectives, uh, things like, are we setting up as a partnership or a corporation, an LLC, a 501c3? Uh, so, you know, the legal status. The products and the services. So, what is it that we're going to be giving uh, or selling uh, out? Uh, you know, a little description of here's here's what we do. The leadership, and we'll get more to the leadership here in a few minutes. But this is one of the most important things as as investors and or donors are looking at your organization. They want to know who's running this, who's in charge, because that's one of the biggest determinants of success. Is not as much what you do or how you're going to do it, but who are the people uh, involved? Uh, then the location, you know, are we going to be uh, local? Uh, are we reaching nationwide, worldwide, whatever? Uh, the current stage. So where are we in the process? Is, is this a startup? Is this an ongoing concern? Uh, if it's starting up, where are we in that process? Uh, and where do we stand? And then the financial status, uh, sort of like the current stage, the financial status is going to tell us then um, uh, you know, where, where do we stand financially uh, going into this? Then we're going to, the second part, we're going to look at the industry analysis and trends. So what's going on in the business? So one of the primary uh, interests of the uh, Johnson students is coffee shops. Uh, they love the idea of coffee shops. So I'll use coffee shops as an example. So if we're going to look at starting a coffee shop, then what are the uh, what's going on with coffee shops? So you obviously you start with Starbucks and you start with Dunkin' Donuts, but you also look at local coffee shops and what's going on there. What are the trends? Uh, is our coffee shops continuing to grow? Have they plateaued and declining now? That kind of thing. So you want to look uh, at industry analysis and trends to understand uh, what's going on in this industry that we're that we're getting into. Then we're going to look at the target market. Who are we trying to reach? Uh, and you don't want to just put out there anybody, you know, we want to reach everybody. No, let's target exactly what is the type of person. So if you're looking at a, uh, a coffee shop, for example, uh, you can see, okay, my target market is professional people who are driving to work in the morning, you know, maybe one uh, uh, target uh, audience that you have. So identifying who are you trying to reach uh, with uh, this business. And then looking at the competition. Uh, so again, this sort of goes along with the industry trends, but who are your specific competitors uh, in this market? So again, if we're looking at a coffee shop, what other coffee shops, where do people get their morning uh, coffee? Uh, where do they hang out? That kind of thing. And uh, so we'll want to identify who are these competitors? How much of a threat uh, are they to our business? And uh, uh, going forward, what, uh, what does that look like? Then looking at strategic position, risk assessment. Uh, so I find a SWOT analysis to be really helpful uh, in looking at your strategic position. So uh, you can look, you can notice here, uh, we have things of internal origin and external origin, as well as helpful and harmful. So internal origin and helpful are our strengths. What is it that we do well? So in this section, you're going to start out with, this is what we are really good at. Uh, but then you want to look at, okay, weaknesses. What, what, what are we not good at? And we need to acknowledge those up front to say th these are some areas that we're just not particularly good at. And then when you look at the external origin, uh, there's opportunities. And so uh, close to our church, there's about a thousand apartments going in uh, that are going to be opened up. And so we look at that and you go, you know, that's a huge opportunity when there's a thousand apartments. Those are a thousand new families uh, coming in that are potential customers or potential um opportunities for us. Uh, and then threats. And, and so a threat might be, uh, you know, hey, if, if there was a Starbucks to open up close by, that would, uh, um, uh, that would be a problem for us. That, they, uh, that, that would be a threat. 
And so putting together this uh, uh, SWOT analysis is gonna be really helpful in that strategic position. And then when you look at risk assessment, um, you want to uh, uh, go through a cycle here. One is identify what risk do you have? And so let's say we're working on a business as mission model and we're going into Haiti, for example. And uh, so we're gonna start a business in Haiti and maybe we identify one of the risks as being what happens if the supply chain gets disrupted? Uh, you know, there's there are storms, there's political issues, whatever. What happens if we can't get what we need uh, for the store? So we've identified the risk and then we assess the risk. And uh, so we identify, OK, how realistic is this risk and, uh, you know, how, how much of a problem is it going to be? And then we look at control or mitigation uh, of the risk. And uh, OK, so if this happens, then what do we do about it? And uh, and then review those controls. And so. This would be in that section of uh, risk assessment and uh, um, uh, strategic positioning. And then we think about, okay, how are we gonna reach the customers? Uh, so we, we get marketing plan, uh, sales strategy. So the marketing is gonna look at things like, what kind of materials do we need? Do, do we need pamphlets or brochures or catalogs, uh, online presence? What's the social media look like? Uh, all of these types of things are going to be the marketing. And then sales are going to be, how do we reach the customer? How do we touch the customer with uh, sales reps or, uh, you know, online? How do we, how do, how does somebody buy our product? And uh, so what's our sales strategy? Uh, then we get into operations. Uh, and so this starts getting into some detail of uh, how are we going to uh, manage this? So again, going back to the coffee shop idea, okay, what, what do the operations look like as far as everything from how do we get material? Where do we store it? How much inventory do we hold? Um, what hours are we open? Uh, how many registers do we have? All of these types of things go into the operations. And so we need to spell out here in our business plan, here is how we're going to operate the business. Then a technology plan. Uh, so technology uh, becomes more and more important as far as looking at what kind of computers do we need, uh, and uh, but but also things like telephone. Uh, you know, how do people communicate with us, um, and uh, you know what's our uh, what's our online footprint look like, and how are we managing this and uh, developing all of the technology that we need. Then management and organization, and, and as I mentioned earlier, this is probably the most important area that an investor or a donor is going to be looking at. Uh, they want to know who have you got in place? What background and experience do they have? And so in this management and organization section, uh, you're going to want to go into some uh, depth into here's who we are and who are the people in the organization. Here's why they're qualified and here's how they're going to make us successful. Uh, but it also shows how we're organized. And so uh, in this case, we've got a board of directors, we've got a CEO, we've got teams uh, under that in management positions. And so an investor or donor can look at this and understand uh, how the business is going to be run, but even more importantly, who's going to be run it, running it. The social responsibility and sustainability section uh, is going to be looking at uh, the mission and how we're going to accomplish it. Uh, the, the triple bottom line here is one of the uh, um, uh, interesting developments that people have been talking about a lot for the past several years. So triple bottom line indicates not only are we interested in profit, and profit's not a dirty word. We need profit to be successful, to run the business. And if we're not making a profit, then we're going to be out of business before too long. And so profit is an important component, uh, even in a, a, a missional type setting. Uh, so, so we've got to have profit. Uh, and then people, uh, we've got to look at the social uh, fabric of the organization and make sure that we're taking care of our people. And what does that look like? And how do we take care of employees? And, you know, what kind of a training do we give? And, and those types of things. And then the planet is the environmental uh, aspect. And so this is going to be more relevant in a manufacturing type environment uh, than, uh, than, than maybe a coffee shop or something like that. But uh, uh, but certainly that is a, an aspect that is important to a lot of people that uh, uh, we make sure we take care of all. So as we're looking at our business, uh, we're looking at the triple bottom line here and making sure that we address all. So this section here is going to talk about how we address each of these uh, bottom lines. 
And then we've got a section on development, milestones, and exit plan. And uh, so the development could be, uh, for example, a product development. So how do we uh, define what products we've got and, and test and design, do the branding, uh, fund it, make it, sell it, all these things. So we're developing a product or a service uh, that, uh, that we want to uh, offer. Uh, and then we look at milestones. So at what point should certain things happen? And so for a new business, for example, or a new product line that you're launching, you know, you may say, you know, by the end of 2021, we're going to have these things done. These milestones are going to be reached. And by the end of 2022, uh, these things are going to happen. And so you put these milestones out there that say, here's the progress and here's how we're going to, uh, to, to uh, develop all this. And then the exit plan is about what happens, you know, is our goal here to develop something and sell it? Or is it to pass it off to the next generation? Is it, you know, at some point, uh, all things come to an end, what does that look like? What does that exit plan uh, look like? And then the financials are uh, one of the perhaps the most difficult part of all of this is because now that we've we've looked at all of these areas of the business and how we're going to market it and how we're going to look at sales and you know how many salespeople do we need for example all these things then we've got to start putting some dollars to it okay what, what are all these things going to cost what do we expect to get back uh, in revenue and so the three primary uh, financial statements that we want to look at uh, it within our business is an income statement cash flow projections, and the balance sheet. And I go over a little bit of each of those uh, here. So the income statement is looking at uh, uh, over a period of time. So usually it's a calendar year. So from January 1 to December 31, uh, you can almost think of it like a movie. What, what happened during this uh, time period? And so here we've got uh, the first thing we start with is the revenue. How much income did we bring in? Uh, then uh, cost of goods sold. Uh, here. So uh, again, going to our coffee shop, we brought in $6,000 of revenue. It cost us $4,000 to buy the coffee, to buy the pastries, all of the things that we sold. Uh, and so we have a gross profit of $2,000. And then from that gross profit, then we take out all of our expenses. Uh, so we have advertising, we have salary, uh, et cetera, to get down to operating expenses of $759. And by the way, a lot of these times, a lot of times these are abbreviated in thousands. So this would probably be seven hundred fifty-nine thousand uh, dollars, just abbreviated seven fifty-nine. Um, and so then we get to operating profit of uh, twelve forty-one, and then take out our interest expense. We get our profit before taxes, and then taxes, and then we get down to the net profit. And the net profit is going to be uh, basically what we take to the bank. And so uh, we we keep track of this and and look at the trends over time. So here's year one. Okay, what happens in year two, year three? Uh, that type of thing. And uh, so that is that is the income statement. Uh, then the balance sheet is basically a snapshot. So if the income statement is a movie, balance sheet is a snapshot. What happens, what, what are the balances on a certain date? And so again, usually December 31 is the date, the end of the year. And so we look at, okay, what are our current assets? And so current assets are things that could be converted to cash within a year. And so we have cash and cash equivalents, uh, accounts receivable. Here's what people owe us. Here's our inventory in the warehouse, uh, et cetera. So we've got 149,000 in current assets, liquid, uh, or, or could be made liquid quickly. And then we have property and equipment. Uh, so we got land, buildings, et cetera. Uh, and so we have total assets of 472,000 in this case. And then liabilities are what we owe people. And so current liabilities, these are things that we owe people in the short term. And so we have accounts payable. So, you know, we've got our coffee supplier we've got to pay, uh, for example, uh, notes payable, our uh, loans or, or short term notes that we've got uh, outstanding. And uh, so uh, in this case, too, we've got 200,000 in long term debt, uh, probably to buy this building and improvements. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, so uh, we've got our total liabilities here. And then we can take the difference between the total assets and the total liabilities, and that is the shareholders' equity. And um, so uh, this tells us what it's, our business is worth. So in this case, uh, we've got uh, the common stock plus the paid-in capital plus the retained earnings minus. So uh, that is what two twenty-seven, two twenty-five. 
uh, roughly uh, $225,000 is what uh, our equity in the business is worth, what, what our uh, investment is worth uh, currently. So that's the balance sheet. And then finally, the cash flow statement. And uh, I won't go into the detail of the cash flow statement, but basically this is to make sure that we've got enough to pay the bills. And so this might be the most important one of all, uh, particularly for a small company, is uh, what cash have we got coming in? What cash have we got going out? And it takes in everything into account from operations. So we just sort of went through the operations part of it. Uh, but then you look into cash invested, cash from financing. Did we borrow money? Did we issue stock? That kind of thing. Uh, and then we, we get down uh, to our total cash position. And uh, it's good to project that out. Uh, you know, so uh, here, here's what we expect year in and year out. And the key reason for that is, are we going to need more cash? Are we going, you know, if, if we look at our projected um, uh, income and expenses and profitability, uh, are we going to need to raise some money? Uh, are we going to need some a bank loan or to uh, get an investor uh, to invest in it? And this cash flow statement will tell us if we're going to run out of cash. And you can see here that what they're projecting, um, the closing balance, they're fine here. They're going to have, they've got some negatives along the way, but they started with enough. One of the things we found in our, in our uh, MBA capstone projects, a lot of our students will do a business plan for them starting their own business. So we've got entrepreneurs and they're interested in starting. And we had one of, one of the guys I was working with was going to start a health club uh, in Central Florida. And uh, he had a certain target market he was going after and he had it all figured out. But one of the things he was just stunned at how much cash he needed up front because when he did this cash flow analysis, he realized how much money he was going to have to be spending on things. And even for his small little idea, he needed $100,000 uh, cash up front to get started. And uh, going through this exercise was helpful for him to understand what, uh, what he needed. And then after we do all of this, the first 13 sections of the, uh, the business plan, then we get down to the executive summary. So in, in the plan, the executive summary actually goes first. Uh, so this is what uh, you want to summarize uh, for, for people who don't have the patience to read through a 50 page document that you've assembled with all of the, uh, the, the financial information, all the details of how you're going to go onto Facebook and Instagram and how you're going to brand your product and all of that. And uh, so, you know, some people may not be interested in all that level of detail. So you put it in, ex in an executive summary, uh, just a page or two. Uh, here's the business. Here's what we're going to do. Here's our goals. And uh, put that right at the beginning, but you wait till last to actually write it uh, after you've determined all of the other uh, pieces of the uh, equation that, uh, that go into it. If you're interested in more detail on all of this and developing a business plan, this is the textbook that we use uh, in our capstone project for the MBA course. Um, uh, Abrams is the uh, author and this is available on Amazon or, or anywhere you buy books. Uh, but she lays it out in a nice step-by-step -step, uh, path of how to put together a, a business plan and all the things that you need to be thinking about and, and doing uh, within that uh, plan. So with that, that is the uh, uh, sort of the overview, the 14-point uh, business plan <laughs> that, um, uh, that we, all the things that we need to look at as we, uh, as we think about uh, launching a new business or launching a new product line uh, within a business or anything like that. Um, any questions? If, uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. My email address is uh, right there on the screen and uh, feel free to shoot me a note uh, if you any questions or if, you, uh, if you're interested in becoming an MBA student or you know somebody who is, I'd, I'd love to uh, reach out and connect with you and, and uh, talk about that. But with that, I will, I'm sorry, go ahead, Tyson. I'm, I'm thinking, how often do people come in uh, to your program with a fully developed idea of here's what I want to do, and you're just going to teach me how I'm going to get there? Uh, you know, that's an interesting question. Usually, the, the ideas come during the program. Uh, the, very seldom does somebody actually start the program knowing what they want to do. Um, uh, usually as they go through and they take the classes, they start thinking more, uh, and whether it's for them personally, entrepreneurially, you know, once I finish my MBA, I want to start a business that uh, does, I, I just uh, had an MBA capstone project yesterday, 
uh, where we've got a lady who wants to start a children's museum in her town. And so her project was, what do I need to do to start a children's museum? Uh, but she hadn't thought about that till, um, I guess she had sort of been thinking a little bit in the back of her mind for a few months or, or maybe even a year, but uh, when she started the program, that wasn't on her radar, but she moved to a new community that uh, needed something like this. And uh, so uh, uh, it was a great presentation. It was, uh, she's, she's gonna be launching that thing uh, uh, fairly, I think next year, she's gonna be preparing for it this year and plan to launch it next year. So uh, uh, it's sort of fun to watch those ideas uh, develop and, and uh, formulate. Great. Well, thank you for leading this. I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of it. I don't know about the other two that are on, but I need to go on to my next thing. So I appreciate you leading this workshop, Wilbur. All right. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. Thank you all for coming. Appreciate it.